Failure can be devastating. After sinking tremendous amounts of money, spending far too much training, all to reach one race, and for it not to go well, it can be soul crushing. Right, got some uh, pretty, pretty shit news. Um, yeah, my left knee, siding have issues. Within a race, after spending hours clinging onto that hope, to grinding, to trying to get to the end, and for at one point to realize it's not your day. In the depths of exhaustion, eventually it's time to do the most painful thing. Give up. <sighs> That's all I've been thinking about for the last hour and a half. Um, but yeah, it's time to drop out. Yeah, I don't think it's a smart idea to carry on. Oh, it's just too painful. Yeah, failure can be hard, no matter the challenge. Hello there. So it's the day after um, yesterday's ordeal. And yeah, I guess there's no beating around the bush. Am I disappointed with the outcome? Yes. And there isn't going to be much fancy editing in this video. I just wanted to sit down, well, in this case I'm standing, but stand up and talk to some of my feelings and my thoughts on failure and some of the success that I've had with dealing with it. Because a few weeks ago, I failed again. I failed at trying to run 100 miles. This is not the first time I failed, not even the second time I failed. This is the third time I failed. In my first attempt in 2022, I was naive and stupid. I didn't really understand my body. I just wasn't a mature runner. So I ran out of energy halfway in sixth place. I didn't know my body well enough to realize that if I'd walked, taken it easy, had something to eat, given an hour or so, I could have got running again. So I just gave up. At that point, I thought that that was the end of my race. That once you walked, you couldn't run again. Little did I know, well, that's never the case. Energy is something you're able to recover. And you know that's the case when your muscles aren't even sore. And because the race was a tense past 100, it meant it was flat, the whole thing. You may think that's easier, but it's not. Strangely, without the hills, you're not forced to walk. You're not forced to walk up the hills, which usually provide an opportunity to eat, recover the heart rate and calm down. And then you can jog gently down the hill. If it's a flat route, you psychologically think that you shouldn't be walking. But that's a massive mistake. But anyway, so last year I tried to run the South Downs Way 100, thinking that this would be my redemption. But no, it wasn't. Unfortunately, during that day, it was 36 degrees. I was exposed running on top of the hill, and I just got dehydrated and caught heat stroke. It got so bad that I felt like I couldn't stop running. Because whenever I did, my heart rate would spike and I'd feel faint almost as if I'd pass out. At 90 kilometers, I was so severely overheating. I tried to sit down, black splotches started appearing onto my vision and I nearly passed out. So yeah, that was the end of my race. But to be honest, I fought and I don't regret it. I was content that I pushed on for as far as I did. Even makes you smile to think about it. And yeah, that brings me on to my race a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a mistake. I'd run 100 kilometers a couple weeks before Bit of a midlife crisis, well, quarter life crisis. And yeah, a week after that, I tried to run, I made it three kilometers and I had knee issues. That's probably the first sign that I should have pulled out. But me, being pretty stupid, I thought I could recover in that week with a large amount of stretching. And yeah, as you can imagine, that didn't work out. So anyway, I rock up to the race, pretty skeptical, but still willing that if all else fails, I'd be able to walk it. I got to 16 kilometers and I walked and I pretty much didn't stop walking for the next 40 kilometers. Uh, and then at that point I had such bad ankle pain that I had to stop. Turns out walking isn't so easy after all. And I set form regretting entering the race. I don't regret putting out on the day because if I had to do another hundred kilometers, I probably wouldn't even be standing right now. Sometimes the medal, just isn't worth it. Looking back, it was a smart decision. 
It may have been a bitter pill to swallow, but it was the right one. Even though failing is always difficult. Anyway, in times of failure, there are a few things I like to do which help me process and deal with the reality of failing so that I can get back into training with the right mindset sooner rather than later. I'm human and you're human. So sometimes you just need to take a day to feel sorry for yourself. Take it easy and just give yourself the day off. And try not to be too hard on yourself. Do something stupid, do something fun, do something hedonistic, or don't do anything at all. But you don't need to immediately rush back into training. I find a day can help you reset. It gives you an opportunity to dwell on what's just happened, to make sure that you never put yourself in the same position again. Like me, it may even remind you of what you really enjoy in life. Progressing towards a goal, attempting a challenge with no guarantee of success, and the excitement and joy that you can gain from that. Helping you to remember the why. If you're feeling demotivated, questioning what you're doing and why you're even doing it, and just lacking the enthusiasm to start again. Take some time to really think deeply about the why. Why did you even attempt it in the first place? Why is this challenge so important for you? Why would you regret not trying again? And why does it even matter? In these questions, hopefully you'll find a few nuggets of reasoning and motivation that you can cling on to when you simply can't be bothered and just want to give up. I also like to think about the positive outcomes. You may have failed in your overall challenge, but I bet there are a few lessons that you learned along the way, even a few good experiences. Just because you failed doesn't mean that you gain some incredible memories along the way. Memories that you may never forget. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my God, it's a full one. At least the, uh, the final lap has been pretty spectacularly beautiful. It's almost worth the suffering. Memories that may one day even make you laugh. And if you're gung ho, like me, sometimes you just gotta learn these lessons the hard way, because that's the only way that you're gonna properly learn them. I also find it useful to remember some of the successes that you've had along the way. I've been running for about eight years now, and I've been lucky to do some pretty incredible things. I ran in the Boston Marathon, I've run in the London Marathon, I've raced in Ironmans, including the World Championships, and I've got a pretty good PB. And even with all that underneath my belt, sometimes I have those questions. Those questions of whether I should give up, whether I'm gonna still be able to progress, even questions whether I'm even a good runner anymore. Crazy questions. So I always find it's useful to remember who, what you've done to provide motivation of what you could do. Sometimes you just have a bad race. And more broadly in life, a bad day. I've had so many races that haven't gone well. And it's okay, that's just how the game is. But just because you've had a bad race recently, doesn't mean you should give up. Sometimes it's just best to move on. After failing a challenge, and not having anything in the diary coming up. You can feel pretty lost, goalless, motivationless. Your mind can wander. I personally always need a target, something scary, something that really intimidates me and something to strangely look forward to. A goal to keep me committed, to keep me training. And after failure, it's just the same. So get onto Google, start searching, get your running bucket list open and choose your next target. Find something that excites you that motivates you, that makes you want to get outside and training as soon as possible. Hopefully something that's even doable, if that's your thing. And before you know it, you'll forget about your failures. And to be honest, that's all I've got for today. And the only leaving thought is this. Failure is an inevitable part of life. If you push yourself to your limit, to the peak of your capability, sometimes it won't work out, but that's okay. At least you tried. Now it's time to brush yourself off. Think about how you can prepare for the next one and what lessons you have learned for the next opportunity that comes your way. And most importantly, try again. And with that, thank you for watching the video. See you soon.